Hello, welcome to my bookshelf. And today I'm super excited to share with you all my thoughts and feelings on After Dark by Haruki Murakami. Now, if you're not aware, this is a magical realism book. So a lot of bizarre things happen to our characters in this book and they realize that this is bizarre, but we, we and they do not actually get any explanation for why these things are happening or what's actually fully going on. It's just, it just happens in the story and we just kind of have to accept it. So it's an interesting way to tell a story for sure, but I do think that Murakami does a good job of, at least in this book, to really incorporate it in the story itself and the story that he's trying to tell. Though admittedly, I do think that there are some things that I, at least just personally, didn't fully understand what it meant. I thought it was interesting, but I didn't fully get the connection, and this book definitely lends itself to being reread. But I do think that it takes a lot to really fully get everything out of it, because there's just so much going on in this book. Especially with symbolism, and imagery, and the magical realism, and just all of it together, it's kind of overwhelming in a way. I do think that the basic story is pretty straightforward, but I do think that there's a lot of things to unpack in here. It was definitely really enjoyable overall, and such an engaging story to read. Murakami is really good at engaging us as readers and creating such unique and interesting characters. I thought that everyone had their own distinct personalities and they were all very different from each other, but they were all really enjoyable to read, so I really appreciated that. So just kind of as a general overview of what the story is about, it basically follows a couple of different characters over the course of one night. It starts right before midnight and it ends right before 7 o'clock in the morning. And really, it just looks at the interactions and the lack of interaction between some characters throughout this span of a night. And that, in and of itself, is kind of unique. I've definitely not seen a story that's so condensed time-wise. I don't think I've read many stories, if any, that focus just on one single night, or just simply a span of a couple hours. It was really interesting to read a book like that. And also, it's set up in the sense where you know what time everything is happening. Each chapter has a, its own heading, and the chapter's title is just like what time it is. So is this 12.05 or is this 1.28? You know, whatever time it is. And it goes chronologically, thankfully. But it does jump between different characters' perspectives within the different time frames. Another really cool thing about Murakami is his use of music within his stories. He specifically mentions there's music playing and what that music is. And also, if there isn't any music, he does specifically say that there is silence. But also, just the amount of times that he mentions what song is playing, like even within the same scene, like it might begin with this song playing and then it'll switch to another song because again, time has gone by. It's definitely used a lot more than I've ever seen before. There's at least like 20 songs mentioned in this book. So I looked up a couple of them to kind of get a flair of like what music was playing and it was just a really cool interactive experience to be able to actually like listen to the songs that these characters were listening to. So that made it a lot of fun as well. And I think that also just goes with how engaging the story is and how every single scene was really interesting and there wasn't a single scene that I would take out or that was boring or dragged on in any way. In fact, by the time I got to the end of the book, I didn't want it to be over. I just wanted it to keep going. I wanted to like really be in the lives of these people for longer. The book ends and I just, I want more. And I feel like I have so many more questions by the end of this than when I started, <laughs> which can be kind of frustrating, but I mean, the main story is somewhat wrapped up towards the end, but not completely, but it's definitely at least going in the right direction where there's a lot of things that happen that there isn't really a direct like resolution for, which is just not something I'm used to as a reader, but so just things like that um, took away from me completely enjoying this, like 100%. So I did give this four out of five stars. I'm kind of on the edge of giving it like five stars. I really did enjoy it, but I don't know. For me personally, I just want a book that has a bit more resolution, I guess, to my characters. I mean, not everything has to be tied up, but 
I guess I just wanted more and I just felt like there was so much more to be said but at the same time I do realize that that's kind of the whole conceit of the story is that we're just getting one night after dark and we're just kind of exploring what that looks like and it's not really about like their entire lives it's just about this one night and really just like how much can happen in the span of a single night and how much it can change you and what night is like and how it's different from the day and like things that can happen at night that don't really happen during the day and just all, all these different interactions but it still made me hesitate to really give it a five stars because I just wanted some more explanation and resolution and I do realize that the book is set up that way so it's really just a problem that I have and not really the book itself because again, it is magical realism. It's not meant to be explained, but I want some things to be explained. It's just something that I'm used to as a reader, so it's kind of a little jarring to not really fully understand everything. But I still really, really enjoyed the story, so I can't knock it too, too much. So I guess that's all I can say without actually spoiling anything that happens in this book. I would definitely recommend this, especially if you're interested in reading some kind of magical realism. I think that this is a pretty good starter into it. It's not like extremely bizarre. There's just, I, I feel like there's flavors of magical realism and it's not like overwhelming in any way, at least not to me. I, I thought it was a decent amount without it being like too much. So I think that this is a pretty good jump into magical realism and I do think that the storytelling is really good. And also, it's really fun to read a book from an author who isn't American. So if you don't know, Murakami is Japanese, and so his characters are Japanese, and it's set in Japan, and it definitely gives it a little bit different flavor, but overall, other than like the names and just a couple things like that, um, you really couldn't tell necessarily that this is set in Japan versus, you know, somewhere in America. So like I said, this was a really enjoyable book. I completely enjoyed the experience of it. I thought it was really insightful and I thought there was a lot of interesting symbolism that was in here as well. It was just a really fun story so I would highly recommend it. But like I said, I think that's all I can say without actually spoiling it. Okay, so that was my review on After Dark by Haruki Murakami. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm also really curious to hear what you think. Um, let me know if you read this book or if what I said sounded interesting to you at all. Um, please just let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and until next time.